One of the most popular questions that's raised whenever you're talking about cryptocurrency is government regulation and laws. How will this affect your ownership, your trading, or your involvement in cryptocurrency? So I'll try to give you the most up-to-date information, but it's changing almost hour by hour, day by day. Just recently, the U.S. allowed Bitcoin futures to be traded on the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. Now this put Bitcoin in the category of commodities, but has now legitimized its trading in the U.S. as U.S. regulators have now allowed this to occur. NASDAQ has just announced that it's about to launch Bitcoin future contracts in 2018. So as you can see, regulators around the world, as long as they keep an eye on cryptocurrency, are not so worried. The legality of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies depend on where you are and what you wish to do with it. Governments the world over are trying to get grips with its risk and its rewards and playing the game between consumer protection, anti-criminal activity, and encouraging innovation. The United States is taking tentative steps to follow Japan in regulating fintech, though the end game is far from clear. Importantly, Bitcoin does not need to win every battle to justify a sky-high price. Japan, the world's third largest economy, has an extraordinary high currency to income ratio, so Bitcoin's success there is a major triumph. Now, it would be a folly to think that Bitcoin will ever, or any altcoin will ever supplant the central banks issued money. It's not here to replace the dollar, the pound, the, the Korean won. It's not here to replace the euro, okay? It's one thing for governments to allow small anonymous transactions with virtual currency. Indeed, this would be desirable. But it is an entirely different matter for governments to allow large-scale anonymous transactions, which would make it extremely difficult to collect taxes or counter anti-criminal or terrorist activity. So it would be interesting to see how the Japanese experiment evolves. The government has indicated that it will force Bitcoin exchanges to be on the lookout for criminal activity and also collect information on deposit holders. This is also what the U.S. and the U.K. have required. It's called KYC, Know Your Customer. So they're requiring you, to, when you open an account, to get the proper identification as well as verifying who they are. Now, this also stops fraud. You know, you can't just anonymously accept a credit card and hope that it's good or accept money from a wire transfer or a third-party payment provider without knowing something about the issuing of that income. If, so if you think of cryptocurrencies like the Wild West, then the coming regulations are like how barbed wire affected the West and the U.S. Depending on your perspective and which side of the fence you were on, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Prior to the invention of barbed wire in the late 1800s, settling the West was a struggle between farmers and ranchers, government and crypto buyers. Farmers would build fences only to have them trampled by free-roaming livestock. So that's one side of the fence, but the other side are the advocates for smoothing out the crazy turbulence in the crypto markets and bringing order and some sense to the neat geometry and governance of the cryptocurrency space. Now, things like ICOs, which only popped up in 2016 and boomed in 2017, leading to fears of crazy speculation and ballooning bubbles. The Chinese government followed the ICO crackdown by announcing an outright ban on all cryptocurrency exchanges. Now, this inspired massive market tumbles across all cryptocurrency, striking tens of millions of dollars off the books. But the cryptocurrencies recovered, and actually China eased up. They've banned ICOs, but they've allowed exchanges to re reopen with certain rules and regulations in place. So issuing a ban is an absolute form of regulation. Rather than letting people settle a new digital frontier behind government-defined fences, the Chinese government has effectively said that they would rather leave the new space barren and unutilized. That was until they rethought. Except, of course, that now, it's really difficult with cryptocurrency. Now it's become a network around the globe, and since it is a decentralized network, unless you destroy the internet, you can't destroy the cryptocurrency space. So even if governments and maybe someday corporations, warlords, and powers that be decide not to recognize cryptocurrencies, they would have to completely dissemble what are now growing global networks. 
So as a result, there are renewed interest in regulators from Singapore, the United States, Japan, China, all to have the proper oversight of the space, not to ban it. But some worry that too many rules could potentially deter firms from innovating on the blockchain. And blockchain is synonymous with cryptocurrency, and blockchain is growing by leaps and bounds and becoming part of our everyday working environment. It's becoming a technology that's used by every company. Now, Russia continue to change its mind and handle how decide how it's going to handle cryptocurrency. One day they're going to issue their own state cryptocurrency, the next day they're banning exchanges, the next day they're allowing exchanges to open, but they're not allowing trading platforms. So everybody's trying to figure out where to be. The Australian government is attempting to crack down on issues such as money laundering and terrorist financing by introducing a new bill which includes regulation of cryptocurrency exchanges. That's it. And we want those cryptocurrency exchanges to be regulated. We want to know our money is safe also. But ICOs are a different story. The way ICO work is fairly straightforward. Companies create and issue digital tokens that can be used to pay for goods or services on their platform and stashed away as an investment. They put out white papers describing the platform, software, or product they're trying to build, and then people buy these tokens using widely accepted cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And there's no protection. And that many, these many worries, because there's plenty of room for money laundering or to finance terrorist activities or to engage in other fraudulent behavior, especially in countries where corruption is rampant. So we do want regulation, but we want it gently. So keep an eye on what's happening in the crypto space and understand the rules and regulations. Bye now.